Number 26. Find the eccentricity of the ellipse 16x squared plus 25y squared minus 128x plus 150y plus 81 equals 0. So the first thing we're going to have to do is get this into the standard form of an ellipse. So the standard form is it's very similar to the standard form of a circle. You're still going to have this x minus h squared plus y minus k squared. But now these are both going to be divided by these numbers a and b. And it's all going to equal 1 in the end. And this a and b, if, uh, if you've seen an ellipse, it's kind of just like a squished circle. Uh, it's, it's kind of hard to draw. But anyway, this a and b, you have this major axis. So like you can almost think of it as like the diameter, but the diameter has like different lengths now. So a is like this longer radius. This is called this is actually called the major axis. If I went from here to here, would be the major axis. Well, a is just half of that. And then b is what's the what's called the minor axis, or in this case, it's actually half the minor axis. So we just have to get it into this form, and then we can use these two values in order to solve for the eccentricity, and we'll get to that later. So to get it into this form, we're going to have to do some completing the square. As you see here, we have some squared terms, or some factored perfect squares that we don't have up here. So we're going to have to get into that form. So first thing I'm going to do is just group all of the same things in the same place. Um, so I'll put all my x's here, so 16x squared minus 128x. And then I'll have 20, plus 25y squared plus 150y. And that equals negative 81. I'm just moving this 81 over to the right-hand side. Now I'm going to do some factoring. I'm going to take a, a common factor out of, out of each of these sections. So 16 times x squared and 120 divided by 16 should be 8. So 16 times x squared minus 8x plus 25 times y squared plus, and then 150 divided by 25 is 6y, equals negative 81. So we've done all this factoring, but we haven't quite gotten our perfect square terms like we want here. So this is where completing the square comes in handy. So just like we did for the circle, if you've seen that video, just like we did for the circle, we're going to have to add some numbers inside of our parentheses that makes that whole thing in the parentheses a perfect square. So the way we do that is you take the x coefficient, negative 8, you divide it by 2, and you square it. So we're going to have a plus 16 in right there. And then the same sort of deal for the y's. You get y squared plus 6y. And then to get the term you're adding, you take 6, divide it by 2, and you square it. So 6 over 2 is 9. Or sorry, 6 over 2 is 3. And then square that, you get 9. And that's equal to negative 81. But of course, we've added these things on the left-hand side. And so we can't just neglect them on the right-hand side, or else they wouldn't be equal anymore. So what do we add over here? Well, we added the 16 inside. But we can't just add 16, because you can see it's being multiplied by this 16 out here. So we actually have to add a 16 times 16, or 256, on the right-hand side. And then same logic applies here. Uh, for the y's, we added this 9 in the parentheses, but the distributive property says, well, we're going to take this 25 outside and multiply by it. So we actually have to multiply or and add a 25 times 9, which is 225. So when I factor all this, you get 16 times x minus 4 squared plus 25 times y plus 3 squared equals... And give me a second, negative 81, negative 81 plus 256 plus 225 gives you 400. So this equals 400 out here. So you might notice that the big difference between this and our standard form now, we have our x minus h squared, we got the x minus 4 squared and the y plus 3 squared. The big difference now is that we need to have this all equal to 1. Well, that's a pretty easy fix. We can just divide both the left and right by 400. So if we do that, uh, 400 divided by 400 obviously is going to give you 1. If I divide this by 400, and I divide this by 400, I can actually get it into this form by saying, well, 
16 over 400, that'll simplify to 25. So this simplifies to x minus 4 squared over 25 plus, and then 400 over 25, that simplifies to 16, times y plus 3 squared equals 1. So now we have this in the standard form. And that was a lot of steps, but now we can finally get to finding the eccentricity. So the eccentricity, here's whenever we can actually use our formula. The eccentricity is equal to the focal length divided by the length of, or divided by this a, this major radius. And now that we have this equation, we can actually see what that is. Well, a is pretty easy to find. Um, a is just going to be the square root of 25. So a is going to equal 5. And I've actually lied to you just a little bit, but it ended up working out in this case. Pretty much out of a and b, it doesn't really matter um, that the a is associated with the x or that the b is associated with the y. a is just going to always be the larger out of out of b. Or a is always going to be the larger out of a and b. So if 25 happened to be under the y plus 3 squared, like if these were flipped, then the a squared would still be 25, even though it's with the y. Hopefully that made sense. So a equals 5. And now here's the thing with, with c. c is the focal length. And to find the focal length, you, you use like a modified version of the Pythagorean theorem. So the focal length c squared equals a squared minus b squared. So a squared from our formula, we see a squared equals 25. And b squared is just 16. So c squared equals 9, or c equals 3. So now we have c and we have a, and now we can just divide them. Eccentricity equals c over a equals 3 over 5, which equals 0.6. Oof. That, that was a lot of math, but we got to the answer. All right, now I'm going to show you how to do this on the calculator for those of you that stuck around for this entire time to learn how to do it by hand. Because the calculator way is definitely faster. But I wanted to show you how to do this by hand first. So. I'm going to make a graph page, and it's in function notation right now, but we can change that to be a relation. And the reason we want that is because now you see everything is in terms of x and y. And you can see in our original equation, all of our x's and y's are like jumbled together. It's not like y equals a function of x. X's and y's are all mixed together. So that's why we have to make it a relation. So our equation is 16x squared plus, so I'm going to have to go back and forth a while. Okay, so plus 25y squared plus, or sorry, minus 128x plus 150y, and then is it plus 81? Yes, plus 81 equals 0. And we get this ellipse. So to find the eccentricity, you go to menu, and then analyze graph, and then down here you see analyze conics. An ellipse is just a kind of conic, uh, as a conic section. And then see on option 8, you get eccentricity. So I can hit enter or hit 8, and then hover over here, and you see we get an eccentricity of 3 fifths. So this is the shorter way. I still wanted to show you how to do it by hand, because like I said in previous videos, sometimes the, the question will test this knowledge instead of just saying, okay, what is this value? It'll, I've even seen questions, maybe it'll say like, if the focal length, it'll be as easy as if the focal length is 3, and the length of the major radius is 5, what's the eccentricity? Which is super, super, super easy if you know this formula, but you wouldn't know the formula if you only ever used the calculator. So anyway, um, if you have any questions from other tests, make sure to leave a comment, and I'll make a video with the solution. With that said, if you enjoyed the video, leave a like and subscribe, and I'll see you next time.